What's up y'all, I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we are going to look at two more IB style examples of the binomial expansion or the binomial theorem. The first one that we're going to look at is what happens if you are missing something inside the parentheses. If you don't know a constant or a value inside the parentheses and you want to know what that value is. The second example that we're going to look at is how do you find the power, the n value of the binomial if you don't have that given to you. Let's get to it. We're looking at the expansion of 4x plus k to the fifth power. We know that the third term is 40x cubed and we want to find the possible values of k. All right, so there's already a couple key things in here that we want to consider. The first being that we know that this term is going to go to the third power. The second big clue is right here. So this is telling us there are possible values of k. So if I were working through this problem, I'd be looking for maybe one, two, three possible solutions, but it seems as though there would be more than one considering that it says values. So let's start by writing out our binomial theorem. That says a plus b to the nth power, and we can find any term within there by doing n choose r, Pascal's coefficient, a to the n minus r, b to the r power. So if you're not familiar with where I got this binomial theorem from, make sure you check out the video up above um, and then pop on back over and see how we solve these problems. So our n value is going to be five because that's right here, the fifth term, right? So we've got uh, n is five, n is five. Now, one of the things that I know from all of my patterns with my binomial expansion is that the exponents of the two terms of this term or of this term and this term, I should say, they always add up to five. So if I know that this thing is going to be at the cubed term, then I know that three plus some other number is going to equal five. Well, of course, that number is going to be two. So that's going to be what our R value is. The other way you can consider it is if you're, again, familiar with our binomial expansion, then this thing is just going to go down, 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 fifth term, fourth term, third term, and then, okay, so what, ha what does it have to be there? It's going to be two. So now we know our R value is going to be two. So now we got everything we need to find the X cubed term. So we're going to take five, choose two, and then we're going to take four X, and that's going to go to the third power. And then we know that K is going to go to the second power. Here's our, this is our 4x term, this is our k term. And we know that this whole thing is going to equal 40x cubed. So 5 choose 2, there's a few different ways that you can do this. You may already know Pascal's triangle up to the fifth level, that's about as far as I know off the top of my head. You can use your NCR function or you could use the factorial function to find this. Like I said, I know this off the top of my head. I've used it so many times that I know it's going to go 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So the, the second, R5 choose 2, is going to be R0, R1, R2. So this is going to be a R2, R2D2. R2D2? No. No? No. So that's going to be 10 times 4 cubed times x cubed times k squared is all going to equal 40x cubed. Now in this case, because I'm really trying to find the k value and I already see that I've got my x cubed and my x cubed, I really don't need to worry about those things. So I'm just going to knock those things out of there and I'm not even going to focus on those. I'm just going to focus on my numbers because, or you could say you divide both sides by x cubed and you get rid of them that way. Either way, it doesn't matter. So uh, I've got to now solve 4k. I've got 10 times 4 cubed, which is 64. Uh, k squared, and that's going to equal 40. So that gives me 640 k squared equals 40. I'm going to divide both sides by 640. So I've got 40 over 640. I can do a quick simplification of that to 4 over 64, just dividing both sides by 10. And then I've got my k squared equals, ooh, I can even, I can even simplify this a little bit more. Both of those things are divisible by 4. So I could go 1 16th. So I take the square root of both sides of my equation, and when I do that, I have to consider both uh, the positive and negative results of this, and I end up with a value of 1 fourth. So here are my two solutions, my two values that we were looking for. They're going to be 
k is equal to positive one fourth and k is equal to negative one fourth. And if you wanted to check it, you could just pop that one fourth back into the equation, put your positive, put your negative in there and see what you come up with. You should come up with 40. So there's our first example. Now, if you've gotten this far and you're still watching, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, and uh, let's get on to our next example. The coefficient of the x squared term in the expansion of 2x plus 1 to the nth power is 60. So that means that's going to be 60x squared, right? So I want to find the value of n. Oof, this is going to be a tough one. We don't know what n is, and we actually don't even know what r is at this point. So let's just start thinking about how does this work out altogether as an actual problem? Or how does this... Hi, Blanca. The little clicky-clack sounds of my dog walking by. Maybe she needs her toenails cut. Uh, so let's think about how the expansion works out. So if we were to think about this thing in general terms, we would have Pascal's piece, and that would take us from n choose 0, n choose 1, n choose 2, n choose 3, and so on, right? That's going to keep on going on forever. And then we know our first term, our a term, our a term here, it's going to start at our n value, and it's going to go down. So our expansion, as we expand our a, expand our a value, that's going to go from 2x to the n power, 2x to the n minus 1 power, 2x to the n minus 2 power. Well, wait a minute. What's going to happen? This thing is going to go on forever like this, and I'm never going to get to my x squared term because I don't even know where I start. So I'm just going to keep on taking a value for n infinitely. So I have to figure out a way. How do I get in here to, to, to figure out what that r value is? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this from 2x plus 1, and I'm going to do 1 plus 2x to the nth power. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute. You can do that? What? You can't just change that. So let me show you why I do this. So if I started with m plus n to the third power, let's say, I know that's going to expand out to m cubed plus 3m squared n plus 3mn squared plus n cubed. And if I took n plus m cubed, well, then I would have n cubed plus 3 n squared m plus 3 n m squared plus m cubed. Oh, yeah. These two things are exactly the same. They're just reversed. So we're just going to take it and flip it. So instead of having our x's go this way, we're going to have our x's go this way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to expand our b value. And what's going to happen with that is we know that instead of our b value going from n down to 0, it starts at 0 and goes to n. So here now we're going to have 2x to the 0 power, 2x to the first power, 2x to the second power. Aha! That's what we're looking for right there. We're looking for 2x squared. Cool. So now we've got our r value and we can change our r value to 2. Now let's start laying it out using our binomial theorem. We're going to have n choose 2, and then that's going to be multiplied by 1 to the n minus 2 power times 2x to the 2 power, and that whole thing is going to equal 60x squared. 1 to any power is going to be 1, so we don't even need that piece anymore. Well, let's look at n choose 2. n choose 2. We don't know n, we can't use the ncr function in our calculator. So we're going to have to use the factorial equation that we have to calculate the combinations of this, or n choose 2, or uh, Pascal's triangle. That equation is n factorial over n minus 2 factorial 2 factorial. And if you're not familiar with that formula, check out this combinations video, and we walk through uh, why this works out the way that it does. So as we expand this, we've got n, n minus 1, times n minus 1, times n minus 2, times n minus 3, and so on. And then, you know what, I'm going to just, I'm just going to flip these two things here. So I'm going to do 2 factorial first, just because to have 2 first, so 2 times 1 is 2. And then I'm going to have n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4. Ah, yeah. 
these things all simplify out. So I'm left with this piece. Out of this whole thing, I'm left with this piece. And that's multiplied by two squared x squared, and that's gonna equal 60x squared. That two x, that two squared x squared comes from right here. So now, ultimately, I have n times n minus one over two times 4x squared equals 60x squared. Like we set up above, we don't really need these x squareds because we're really looking for the n value. And we can also see that this two is gonna simplify with that four, so we're gonna be left with two up here. Now if I divide both sides by this two to get that out of the way, I'm left with n squared minus n equals 30. All right, I'm gonna bring my 30 over because now I've got a quadratic. That's awesome, I know how to do quadratics. So I'm gonna factor this, I'm left with n minus six, n plus five equals zero, so n equals either six or n equals negative five. Now we know with our binomial expansions that our powers are always positive integers. So this negative five is not possible. So that leaves us with just one value for our n, and n is going to be six. I hope these last two examples were helpful for you to help kind of pull together all the different types of problems you're generally going to see on IB exams. Now you're not gonna see any one of these individually exactly like this. You might see combinations of the ones that we did in this video and the ones that we did in this video, but the thinking around all of these things are is generally the big picture thinking ideas that you're gonna have for binomial expansion and the binomial theorem. And Click subscribe so you can keep up with when we release new videos about all the other topics from IBSL Math. I'll see you in the next video.